Welcome to another one of my physics videos. In this video, we're going to be talking about projectile motion or kinematics in two dimensions. And here in this example, we have a ball that's being launched at 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees uh, with the ground. And we need to find the total time that the ball is in the air. Before I get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Chris Sieber. I'm the creator of all the videos here at Math Meeting, and I want to help you guys out as much as possible. So if you need any extra help with your homework, uh, send me pictures to homework solutions at mathmeeting.com of all of your homework problems, and I'll get back to you immediately uh, with a quote. But let's not waste any more time, and let's get started right away uh, with this example. All right, so we need to find the total time the ball is in the air. And just like in our previous example, uh, we need to separate this velocity into a vertical component and a horizontal component. Uh, for most two-dimensional problems, this is the first step you're always going to do. All right, so this, so this velocity of 20 meters per second, you can separate it. It has a vertical component because it's going up. We'll call this v the vertical comp the component, the velocity in the y direction, and it also has a horizontal component since it's moving to the right. We'll call this the velocity in the x direction. And if we use our trig functions, uh, we know that the velocity in the y direction, or the vertical component, is equal to our, our initial velocity of 20 meters per second multiplied times the sine of 30. All right, because our angle is 30 degrees with the ground. So 20 times the sine of 30 degrees. Sorry, I'm running out of space there. All right, and we know that the sine of 30 is equal to 1 half. So 20 times 1 half is equal to 10. All right, so we know that our velocity in the y direction is equal to 20 times 1 half, or 10, is equal to 10 meters per second. And this is when the ball is being launched. All right, this is the vertical velocity when the ball is being launched. This is equal to 10 meters per second. And I highly recommend, if you don't know how to separate your vertical and horizontal com components using your trig functions, uh, to go back to my previous videos. And I show you how to, how to separate your components using the sine and cosine. All right, so, uh, so this vertical component is equal to 10 uh, meters per second. All right, and what else do we know? Uh, well, we know that this ball is going to take a parabolic path, and then eventually it's going to hit the ground. And we know uh, that at the max height, that the vertical component is equal uh, to zero, because this max height, the ball's moving to the right, but it's not moving up or down. Okay, so we know that the vertical component at this point is equal uh, to zero. So the the velocity in the y direction is equal to zero meters per second, and this is at the max height. All right, we know that it's equal to 10 meters per second when it's being launched, and it's equal to zero meters per second uh, at the max height. And once again, these are the vertical components of the ball. All right, so what else do we know? Uh, we also know that the acceleration in the vertical direction is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, uh, which is 9.81 meters uh, per second squared. And I'm gonna round to 10 just to make our calculations a little easier. So our acceleration of the ball is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, and it's gonna be a negative 10 meters per second squared. All right, and this is the acceleration due to gravity. And the reason why it's negative is because our, our, our velocity is positive that's going up, so if, if the up direction is positive, then the gravity pointing down has to be negative. So make sure that you keep your signs uh, correct. Um, so our acceleration due to gravity is equal to negative 10 meters per second squared. All right, so we have three pieces of information and that's all we need uh, to solve this problem. And once again, notice how all of our units are in the y direction. We need to stay consistent. Our, our initial velocity of when it's being launched is in the y direction, the, the velocity at max heights in the y direction, and the acceleration is in the y direction. And this is really important when using our kinematic formulas. So make sure to keep that in mind. All right, um, so what are we trying to find? 
we need to find the total time the ball is in the air. So we're looking for time. This is what we're trying to solve for. All right, so which formula are we going to use? We're going to use this first formula right here because we have a final velocity at max height. We have an initial velocity when it's being launched. Uh, we have our acceleration due to gravity and we're solving for time. So we're going to use uh, this first formula and solve for t. Um, so if we rearrange that formula, we have our, our time is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity all divided by the acceleration. All right, and if we plug everything into our formula, we know that our final velocity is the velocity at the max height, which is equal to zero. All right, so we plug in a zero for our final velocity minus our initial velocity, which you know is the uh, ve vertical velocity when it's being launched, which is 10. So we plug in a 10 for our initial velocity and our acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, which is equal to negative 10. All right, so if we plug this into our calculator, our time is equal to negative 10 over negative 10, which is equal to positive one. So the time is equal to positive one and our units are in seconds, so one second. But this time is the, is the time when the ball goes from the ground to the max height. And we're looking for the total time. All right, so this is not our answer. Our time of one second is only when the ball is from the ground to the max height. Our total time is going to be exactly double that uh, because it takes half the time uh, to get to the max height and it takes the same amount of time to get back down, which would be double. All right, so our total time is equal to double the time it takes to get from the ground to max height. So double one second is equal to two seconds. So our total time is equal to two seconds. This is the solution to our problem. I hope this video gave you a better idea on projectile motion and kinematics in two dimensions. Um, in my next video, we're going to find the horizontal displacement of the ball. Uh, so check that out if you wanna keep on learning. Uh, once again, I do help you out with your homework. So send me pictures uh, to homework solutions at mathmeeting.com if you need any extra help. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.